Today is the second tournament of uh, Sparkling Wine Olympics. Okay. Bam 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 bam. <laughs> ba -dum, bam 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 bam. I'm particularly happy today. Oh, why is that? Because we are going to taste the seven wines. Seven sparkling wines. <laughs> seven sparkling wines, exactly. I hope that some of them are good. I hope so too. Yeah, I put this liver on the line. It better be for a good purpose. Please. <laughs> okay, so All right. let's start. So how was the tasting? Overall it was good. Yeah. Uh, higher quality wines than last week. When you're picking for sparkling wine, you pick unwrap. And it's the process that lends the style and tradition and history more than the grape variety. So you have to look for things like alcohol in warmer climates. And, but in any event, you know, everybody picks sparkling wine early. Mm -hmm. You pick unwrap. You pick mm. unwrap, you're not getting full flavors. So it's very difficult. These are mainly Mateau Champenoise wines. It's the quality of winemaking is good. Yeah? Yeah. I was looking for multiple countries, but I had a feeling because I found five champagnes. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I had a feeling. Let me just write a few things down here and then I'll get back to it. Let's pick three best wines first. Okay. Then, can I pour all the wines out now and you pour me them all again? Okay, That's of course. Right. You don't complain about spoiling and wasting. If both of us begin to complain, then it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> Only one person is good enough. Only one is allowed to yeah. complain. <laughs> Otherwise, it gets out of hand. Mm -hmm. Well, next week you won't have to worry. I'll be tasting fermenting musts while I make Riesling in Germany. So you are excited? I am. I have two weeks in the Mosel. Okay. Okay. What is your best one? Number two. Numero dos. Two? Same score for one and two. It's not as balanced as number one, but it wins because it's got more complexity. Yeah. Number two shows more complexity for me too, but it's slightly oxidized. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I wrote that. So between these two, I preferred actually... Number one. Number one. Okay. And what is your second best wine? Second best wine was number one. Number one. And your third best? My third best... In the end, because I was going backwards and forwards. <laughs> Me too. Number five. Number five. What oh. were yours? Interesting. My best wine is number five. Your best wine is number five, okay. Yeah. It was just clean and almost, it was flawless. It was really, really well made. I love the salty character to it. But it also had a slightly sweaty character to it. Sweaty. Sweaty. Because now I'm, I'm sweating now. Yeah. <laughs> and my second best is number one. Okay. And your third best? My third best is number two. Okay. So we have the same three as our top three wines. That's true. You just screwed up the order. <laughs> <laughs> as always, right? <laughs> what can I say? At least you got the top three wines. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Did you ever stop to think that I have influenced you so much that your palate is now as screwed up as mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I often think about that. That's true. Because we've spent so much time together uh -huh. and I learned so much from you. Of course, I'm screwed. Yeah, you're big time <laughs> screwed unless I'm right. In which case, you made out big time. So, can I tell you from which country and from which region? Uh, sure. They're? they're all from Champagne. I had that sense again. Mm -hmm. Right from the beginning, I had that sense. But you know, if these are Grand Marks, it's what's telling me that that's not where it is today. That the Grand Marks are coasting on their laurels. They're making very solid, but unimaginative wines. Peter, these are all Grand Marks. Yeah, I believe it. The price range is between 40 and $50. Yeah, okay. These are all entry champagnes from Grand Marks. I think probably Boulanger is number two. Yes. Let's go with number two as the Boulanger. <laughs> right. So, can I tell you what I prepared today? Sure, please. Boulanger, mm -hmm. Louis Rederet, Paul Roger, Laurent Perrier, Pomerie, Tetinger, Dutz. Okay, then we agreed that number one, two, five are the best. Right. From today. So, let's check from number one. What is this? What is this? Tetinger. We use this 
champagne for our wine class. I remember. For live streaming. Yeah. Yeah, it was worth it, right? Yeah. It got my top score, but then number two got, also got my top score. And then in the end, I preferred number two. Then let's check number two. Oh, has a very thin neck. Probably it's Boulanger. I would think so. There you yeah. go. It's Boulanger. So this uh, first uh, Tetengé is $45 and the Boulanger is $50. That was my favorite, right? Yeah, that was your favorite. The Boulanger. Uh -huh. So what were the others left that now? We have uh, Dutz. Dutz, Roderat. Louis Roderet. Paul Roger. Paul Roger. Pomery. Pomery. And then Laurent Perry. Laurent Perrier. And I included Laurent Perrier because Laurent Perrier was one of the winners from our previous champagne tasting. Oh, okay. So, Veuve Clicquot, Laurent Perrier, André Couloué, Piper oh, Isaac. I remember that. Yeah. Those four were the winners, but I included only one grand mark from okay. those. Paul Roger has been always too sweet for me. Actually. Okay. I think probably one of the sweetest ones was Paul Roger. We are going to unveil number five, one of our winners today. Well, number five. That was one of my best wines. I loved it because I said it was really well made. Yeah, it's really well made, yeah. yeah. I said it's it flawless. It's grippy and salty and it's good wine. It's yeah. a really good wine. Okay, so let's see what it is. Louis Roderay. okay. God, I've always loved this. Louis I have never liked it enough. No? Now I do. I've never liked it enough. A few months ago I brought a bottle of Louis Ruderet and you loved it. <laughs> if it's the only bottle of champagne around, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the only bottle around. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so these are today's three winners. Tetengé, Boulanger, Louis Ruderet. Which was the order? For you, number one was Boulanger, yeah. Tetengé, yeah. Louis Ruderet. And, and you, Ruderet was first. Yeah, for me, Louis Ruderet, Tetengé, and, and Boulanger. Boulanger. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I messed it up. Yeah. <laughs> but not badly. <laughs> not badly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Then let's check what number three is. Number three, hold on. Number three, I thought that was champagne. <laughs> <laughs> and you're perfectly correct. But it was very one-dimensional. Mm -hmm. I was expecting one-dimensional to be like mum or something like that. Among these seven wines, my least favorite wines are normally Paul Roger and Pomerie. Let's see, what do we have? All right, wine number three, Paul Roger. Paul Roger. It's uh, $45. We all love Paul Roger because it was Winston Churchill's wine. <laughs> You're right though, it is sweet. Yeah, it's a sweet and... In fact, and I said. Sweet and simple. Uh, here, look. Somewhat sweet, one-dimensional. Yeah, I also think it's uh, sweet and one-dimensional. All right, then wine number four. Bam, 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 bam. Dutz. Dutz. This one is your least favorite one. Uh, right? One of my two least favorite, yeah. Uh -huh. How about you? This is my fifth one. But it's good wine, it's salty, it's more or less balanced. You know, we, we, we're sort of splitting hairs here. That's what I sort of, the, the overall quality of the tasting, as I said before, it's very good compared to last week. Mm -hmm. As one would expect from champagne. So, including previous champagne tasting, I wanted to include all the grand marks. And I did it. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, and number five was uh, Louis Ruderet, and this Dutz is $44, and Louis Ruderet $50. And then we have number six and number seven. Now we have Laurent Perrier and Pomery. They're all but identical to me. Yeah? It doesn't matter. <laughs> For me, I think uh, number six is uh, Laurent Perrier and number seven is Pomery. Why? Because Pomery has been always oaky, smoky, and sweet. Mm. It's definitely sweeter than number number six. Than number right? six, six, yeah. So Pomerie was my first favorite champagne. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, like uh, 15 years ago, but not anymore. It's certainly sweet. Yeah. I think I'll agree with you. Okay. Laurent Perrier Pomerie. All right, then number six. Laurent Perrier. Price is forty-five dollars. Okay. And number seven is Pomerie. Yeah. 
it's $40. That's a bit surprising for me because Laurent Perrier was one of our winners from the last tasting. Yes, but it wasn't in this lineup. Yeah. If you drink one of these by themselves, it's so obviously champagne. Uh -huh. And then you become bowled over by the fact that it's champagne. In all the wines I've ever drunk, I've never found anything that can give champagne a challenge for the quality of the bottle fermented sparkling wine, with one exception. What was it? And that is, there are some English sparkling wines that are right up there. Oh yeah. To me today, in terms of absolute quality, England is the second best producer. Ah, uh, I also love to drink English love sparkling wine. Yeah. But it's, it's almost impossible to find. We need to find some and export them. Ah, uh, it's very expensive. It's cheaper than champagne, but like... In for, England. <laughs> you mean in England? <laughs> maybe in England, yeah. But it's worth the money. And if you think of the world in the context of global warming, England will start to make better champagne than champagne in, in, in the not too distant future. <laughs> There's a reason that so many of the Champenois are investing in England. Mm -hmm. It's because they've run out of places to make traditional wine because of the changing temperatures in the world. England is still a little cooler. Mm -hmm. From my perspective, they better keep going north because England is going to get too hot as well. Doesn't sound promising. Well, it's fine for the next few years. You're a young man. I'm old. It's probably okay for me. <laughs> Diabolical tasting because if you would have said to me, this is the wine Olympics, and by the way, the wine can come from even a single country, I would have got it. <laughs> but you didn't say that. I didn't say it, right. I didn't say it because you didn't want it. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I intentionally organized these two tournaments like this. So for the first tournament, I included lots of uh, sparkling wines and I included only one champagne. Which really showed. Yeah. I wanted to check it with you, if a very cheap champagne can show its characteristic among other sparkling wines. More so than any other genre in the world. Mm -hmm. Some of the biggest blending exercises for the Champenois, they'll blend 30, 40, 50, 100 different cuvées just to make sure that their cheapest wine mm -hmm. tastes like last year's. <laughs> no, it's true, because it is your job to ensure that successive generations of the entry-level product taste the same. So now their job is to maintain the house style. Mm -hmm. Unless they don't like the style anymore or it goes out of fashion, you have to maintain the house style. To oh. be the cool kids, you've got to be some kind of crazy guy working with your family's vines, which are grown on some kind of little plot outside the back of the house, 100% of Pinot Monier. That's cool. <laughs> this stuff, where these companies are multi-million if not billion dollar companies, where they have access to the grapes of tens of, of, of hundreds of thousands of hectares, and these guys sitting there and blending with the entire knowledge of the history of the Maison riding on their shoulder. Mm -hmm. And all the resources in the world to produce the greatest wines. It's not cool anymore, mm -hmm. but it sure makes for good wine. <laughs> <laughs> and right. they're cheap. Are they cheap? They're cheap. All right. You don't agree. I don't agree. Probably they were cheap from the winery, but... No, they're, they're cheap. I mean, each bottle is touched a hundred times before it gets to the consumer. That is true. And the cool kid ones are more expensive. Mm -hmm. That was it for today. If it was fun, don't forget to subscribe. No, no, you have to subscribe and give us a like. It was fun. We know we had fun. <laughs> Oh, you want to have fun too? Next time. Next time. No, just kidding. You make it possible for us to drink wine of this quality and then to give you better and better information. It's like a hurricane. It's going faster and faster and faster because of their input and our input and their input and our input. <laughs> till it blows out the top. Wonderful experience for everybody. <laughs> so keep up the hurricane work. Hurricane work. Firework! <laughs>
If you want to learn about wine seriously from Peter and me, please click on the join button right next to the subscription box. Then click on wine class join button. This is way better than any other wine school in the world. A new wine class video is uploaded once every week and we also do a wine class on live streaming once a month. If you don't like it, you can cancel it anytime.